Another thing about the two witnesses, uh, you mentioned that uh, at the end of their lives they'll lie in the street uh, for a short period of time, and the whole world will watch them and wonder at what's going on. And you know, uh, we used to talk about uh, satellite TV, that people would be able to watch them on satellite TV or whatever, uh, the big international networks, but what do we have now? We have everybody walking around with these little things they hold in their hand and type with their thumbs, and they're constantly seeing what they want to see, including the world news. And that brings the Bible to life for me. I think the two, when the two witnesses lie in the streets, the whole world's going to be watching them on their, on their little phones. You're right. And you know, about a century <laughs> ago, they used to use that very prophecy to rebut the Bible. Right. How could the whole world see two dead witnesses in the streets of Jerusalem? Exactly. You know, and, and back then you had to have eyewitnesses accounts to actually see them. Nowadays you don't have to be an eyewitness. This right. stuff you can watch this stuff a week later on YouTube. You know, it's going to be it's going to be all over the place on the social networks and instantly. Th- yeah, you can be an eyewitness account and be live streaming it for three and a half days while they're dead in the streets, or you can watch it three or four days later. But they're going to be gift bearing because these guys tormented them so bad. And we're going to talk about probably what some of that torment is here momentarily. But who are they impacting? You know, remember that they torment the whole world. And, and we're going to talk about that as we talk about the trumpet judgments and, and how the world will probably actually think they are got something to do with those kind of plagues. Although they're, they won't be able to distinguish. It's actually trumpet judgments sounded by angels. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But they're also going to be impacting the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. So let's just take, right. for instance, if it's Moses, right? The temple is going to be built. And in the first three and a half years, here's these two witnesses. The day one the temple is built, that's going to be standing room only. I mean, those Jews are going to flock in there. You you look at a picture on Rosh Hashanah, on the recent Rosh Hashanah at the Western Wall, it's standing room only. But they've got to go past these two guys. And Moses is going to be saying things like, hey, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. You know, that was the official sacrifice, the atonement. Jesus fulfilled the law, Matthew 5. Right. The law served as a tutor to bring us to Christ so that we might be justified by faith. That's in Galatians 3. These guys, are, the Jews are going to be trying to reinstate the Mosaic Law. And Moses is going to be going, hey, I'm Moses. Remember the Mosaic Law? It'd be like saying, you want to talk about a flood? Hey, I'm Noah, right? Let's yeah, talk about a flood, yeah. right? So he's going to be warning them that the, their sacrifices and offerings are futile. You know, They need to recognize that Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. He was a sacrificial lamb. So that's a contradictory message. So day one, the, the temple's filled up. Third temple's filled up with Jews. What about day 60? What about year one? Is the head count starting to thin out? What, is, what kind of prophesying says these guys prophesy? What are they warning about? 